Well, hello 3E, and we're talking about deciding what to buy today. Our goal, I know how to research to compare different makes and models of an item so I can make an informed decision on which one to buy. Um, so today we're talking about how do you decide? You know you need a new television. You know you need a new uh, sofa. You know you need a new washer or dryer or whatever it is that you need new. How about we take something like you need a new cell phone. How do you decide rather than just saying um, I'm gonna get the same thing that this person has. Um, can we make an informed decision on what we need to buy? So when you're deciding what to buy it's a good idea to research your options especially if the item you're buying is expensive uh, because you want to make sure you get the best uh, deal for your money. So there are many sites online that could help you out with your choices and basically only you know what you really want in an item. So what I'm going to do is talk to you today about uh, my thought process when buying a new digital camera. And so we're just going to, I'm going to give you a list of places that you could actually look and then I'm going to show you a little bit of what I might do online just for a few minutes um, when I'm thinking about buying a digital camera. So places to look for in information. Um, first and foremost, Google is your friend. Um, you can Google all kinds of things and come up with different information and lots of information about reviews and, and what other people have found from this thing. Um, when you're on Google, you might want to try to Google a question about um, just sort of say, what is the best blank to buy? And you'll get all kinds of people answering that question out there. Still on Google, it helps to use the word comparison. There's lots of websites out there that actually do the comparison for you. Um, they have uh, a whole checklist of things that they want to talk about. They'll pull them up and you can decide from there. Um, you can also, in addition to Google, you can look in newspapers. Newspapers are a good spot to, to spot um, sales and things like that. Uh, a lot of times and for today when I'm going to talk about a digital camera uh, on different um, newspapers they could have ads up on what they have for sale uh, right now and they'll tell you prices and, and different makes and models um, and then you can even go from there and say okay I, li I like these two cameras maybe I should Google those two specific cameras so that you're not starting from nothing. Uh, catalogs is also a good place. If you get the Sears catalog, you might see different makes and models of whatever you want. And of course, the old tried and true ask a salesperson. Uh, just keep in mind when you ask a salesperson that they profit from you buying something. So that might influence the help that they give you. Uh, now there's a few questions in your textbook where you're going to to think about what you might want in cert certain items and things like that. Um, there's no real right way to do this. There's just an informed way to do this. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of my thought process if I were going to buy a new digital camera. Okay. Um, so if you don't know anything about digital cameras, you might want to try this one first. Ask a salesperson. Go in, ask a salesperson or someone else who knows uh, about digital cameras, what kind of digital camera you might want. Now, I specifically want to look at a DSLR camera. A DSLR camera is a camera um, that uses uh, higher that has higher resolution pictures. Uh, so what I'm going to do is well I would open and uh, this is what my my web page looks there my web browser looks like when I first open it. Uh, I'm going to Google um, what is the best DSLR camera to buy. Uh, and look at all, look at the options there. 2013, that might be a good one, or for beginners, that's probably a good idea. I'm um, I'm not a professional, so we'll take a look at for beginners. Why isn't this going? There we go. Okay, best digital DSLR for beginners. Um. So this one says there were six tested best entry-level DSLRs, PC, MEG, entry-level DSS, 
DSLR cameras, 2004 best beginner DSLR cameras. This looks like a good one because they're talking about beginner cameras. So I'm going to take a look and see what kind of cameras they might have. Oh, and this looks like a good one. They've got a whole bunch of cameras that they've revealed. Close all of the pop-ups that come up. Um, and this is a top 10 reviews. So they've got all kinds of things that they've they've already reviewed them all and you can have a, a quick look through where they have them all lined up here. And they, they've got the prices uh, right side by side so you can compare the prices. Um, they've got rankings and they've ranked them uh, 1 through 10 so you can have a look. There's also review sections, so you can read a review. So here's some digital cameras. Nikon D5200, Canon Rebel T51, Sony Alpha, uh, SLT A65, etc., etc. So let's have a look here and see. Um, I'm going to compare the first three. I'm going to take a close look at the first three and take a look at the, what they have. Resolution is how clear and crisp the picture is and how big you can blow it up. I know that much and there's not a whole lot of difference between these two. There, there's, these two things are hovering around 24. This one's 18 but to be honest I don't need a huge resolution because I'm not going to be blowing these pictures up to the size of my wall in my house. So an 18 megapixel would be just as good. Um, although you notice that the 18 megapixel resolution uh, is actually the more expensive camera. So that makes me think, hmm, that's kind of weird. Um, but then I'll look through autofocus focal point. Some of these things I don't know what they mean. So I'm going to focus in on the ones that I do know what they mean. So I'm going to go down features, shots per battery. That's a good one. Um, how's the battery life? All of these are pretty comparable. 660 pictures. 550 pictures, 510 pictures. Those are all pretty comparable. This one gets a little bit more, um, but they're all fairly comparable. Scene mode styles. This one has more modes. Um, so we're just taking a look at all of them. They all have movie capability. So 1080p, 1080p, 1080p means they all shoot video in high definition. So that doesn't matter too much to me. Flip out LCD screen, they've all got that. Um, GPS tagging capability, they've all got that. So they're all really comparable. So there's not a whole lot um, that's going to weigh in on my decision here. Um, they got the height and the weight. This one, this one's a little bit heavier than the other two. And heavy is something that I don't really want. Uh, and it's a little bit bigger in height. So I probably, I might rule this one out just on that alone because it's a little bit bigger than I want it to be, heavier than I want it to be. Uh, so you take a look at all of that information and you say, okay, well, I don't think I want the Sony, but the Nikon and the Rebel, they look pretty good. And if I want to spend that money on them, this one says the Nikon's just a little bit better. Take a look at the overall ratings there. And so they've rated it. They've done a whole lot of this work for you, and you're just going to bounce off of that work. Okay, so you can you can do that kind of thing to make the informed decision, decide what you want. I'm thinking that for this one, the Nikon looks pretty good, uh, especially since the Rebel's even more expensive. Um, now, where else could I go to take a look at these things? Uh, well, first of all, we could read the reviewer comments and see if there's a difference between the two. Remember, I decided to eliminate this one based on it weighs too much or it's a little bit heavier than I want it to be. So we can click and we can read what re what reviewers say about it and see what they what they think. And it's going to take a few minutes. Um, compare the top three entry-level cameras. Where are some of the reviewer comments? We got some more things here. Uh, features, they gave them 10 out of 10. Support, I don't see the reviews. It's interesting. Um, 
If I click on shop, it'll tell me where I can go to buy these, but I probably don't want to buy them online. Uh, this person gives it a 9.9 .9 out of 10. First rate camera. Uh, they really like the, the Nikon. Now, a few other things that might influence my decision to buy is the fact that I actually already own a Rebel camera. It's not the T5i, uh, but it is a Rebel. And some of the things that I already have on my Rebel uh, I could probably use here too. So um, things like lenses and, and that kind of thing might influence my decision. Um, so there's lots of different things that you want to pull in when you're doing them. Now let's have a look. If I Google compare digital cameras, let's see what kind of thing I come up with. And remember, I'm not making a full decision right now. I'm just looking through to find different spots where I can go uh, to compare. So here's one that says side-by-side -side comparison. You can tell I've already clicked on it once when I was fishing around before. Now, this site has all kinds of cameras that it's going to compare. And you can pull up which ones you want. The last time was picking the best ones and it decided what was the best. This one says side-by-side -side comparison and I can pick from, oh, look at all of these. Now these aren't just di digital SLRs. If I wanted to search, I could search for DSLRs. Um, of course, it looks like it's only the Sony that actually put it in their name. Uh, if I want to search for Canon Rebels, there's a few different types of Rebels. And I could say, oh, well, I want a Rebel. What's the difference between the T1i and the T2i and the T3i and the T4i and the T5i? That's a lot of them. Uh, and what I could do is I could click on them. What's the difference between the T1 and, say, the T4 or the T5? And see how it put them all in here? It gives you a quick recap right off the front. The T1i is 15 megapixels. The other two are 18 megapixels. Um, everything else looks pretty much the same in just the basic stuff. So when you click compare, it's nice that I've decided maybe I'll get a new Rebel. Uh, see see what I have a look here. These ones aren't getting very good reviews. This one's only 74% positive, 77 and 76. Um, you'd sort of like them to be much more in the in the positive range than that. Uh, the price, this one doesn't have a price. This is the older model Rebel here. The uh, This is the T1i. Um, so maybe it's not even being sold anymore. So you can take a look at the price and it gives it to you uh, in American dollars and in pounds. So this site must be used in uh, Britain too, in the UK. Um, they're all compact SLRs, stainless steel, polycarbonate resin with glass fiber. They're both made of the same thing. Very similar cameras, 18 megapixels. Um, Sensor photo detectors, 19 megapixels on this one. Uh, I'm not going to sort of ignore this column here, and maybe I'll just get rid of that column altogether. Uh, the fact that there's no price suggests to me that it might be very hard to find that camera. It might be discontinued. So I'm going to get rid of that one and take a look at these two. See, and you can have the comparison. Most of them, they're looking exactly the same. So we're only really concerned with how they're different and I'm not finding a whole lot of differences. Built-in flash, digital zoom, manual focus, number of focal points, all of these things are the same. So there's not a whole lot of difference in these two cameras. Um, and the, it goes on and on and on. Flash modes, it's got all the same flash modes. There's not a whole lot different between these two cameras. So if I go up and take a look at them, the deciding factor might be the price. So if I take a look, $849, $899. So if there's not a whole lot of difference, maybe I go with the one that's $50 cheaper. Okay. So there's lots of different ways to figure into this. So you have a few different questions to do on your own. And then the very last thing you're going to be doing is actually finding something uh, to research on your own uh, 
using mostly the internet so you can grab the iPads and do some research on that uh, and what you research is going to be kind of up to you. Um, so that's where I'm going to stop talking. I've talked too long already uh, and you can get to work.